All right, let's say we want to look and see how prices have changed um, either relative to a previous time period or actually looking at the whole, an aggregate, meaning the sum of everything. And then finally, the last one is actually putting weight on these based on a quantity. So the if we're looking at each item, then notice that my base period is going to be the 1994. So I just simply would take my period in price in period T, 344, divided by the base period, and then multiply that by 100. And then I copy and paste this straight down. So certainly, as we're seeing here, I mean, there are some huge differences. I mean, the, you know, definitely the gas is one of the largest ones. If we said, well, that might be California prices, right? And change the price a little bit. And maybe even said, oh, well, let's have a good 2014 year. And the same with the gallons of gas to make it maybe more seem believable. So remember what you're looking at is the increase is anything over 100. And so in this case, if I rounded these correctly, meaning mathematically correctly, then I can see every single price has increased. How do I know that? Because they're all over 100. And the greatest increase seemed to be, let me copy my stuff right here. The greatest increase seemed to be based off of gasoline, and the smallest increase was on tires. If I want to look at just a whole to see the increase of everything, then what this formula is saying is take the sum, okay, so I'm going to look at the sum. Um, of the particular period that I'm interested in, the 2014, and divide it by the actual base. Okay, so my this P is just my price, my unit price, and the little I sub I just says, or I sub T, just says each item for that particular period. And so if I do that, I want to sum... 2014 and then divide by the sum of the prices in 1994. So I'm looking at an overall what's happening, increase or decrease. And oops, I'm sorry, sorry, forgot to multiply by 100, which you can kind of see without it, that I can see overall the prices increased by about 16%. Well, a lot of times people will argue, but you should be putting more weight depending on these quantities here. Okay, so let's say this was a tire store or an automotive place that these were the quantities sold for, for the base period. So all you're doing now is you're just simply taking each price, and the, the top one is going to be for the period I'm interested in, and multiplying it by the quantity. Okay, so each price times the quantity. So now what we're doing is we're actually weighting based on an actual quantity and then divided by, now the bottom is the base, so I'm gonna take this price times the quantity, so 1994, times the quantity, and then plus this one times the quantity, and see what the difference is, okay, based on, um, in this case, you know, the, the period from 1994 to 2014, and I keep forgetting to multiply by 100, so let me take all of that in parentheses and multiply it by 100, and I see there's not really much difference, right? So let me add some decimals there and see a little bit of difference, but there wasn't really a big difference based on the quantities. So what you might look at, so going back up here, the gallons of gas, why not make this quantity? I mean, this is what's cool about Excel. You can play with this stuff, right? 
If you change these quantities around, then you'll start to see the weighted part goes up, make some of these quantities a little smaller, and you'll start to notice the weighted part tends to go up if you put less weight on things that um, were not affecting. Okay, so in this case, the tires were what, 15% uh, increase that didn't have the largest increases. So these are just simple price indexes so you can look to see if you had an increase in a product.